Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BJ Tech News and I'm kind of excited because I'm starting a new web series and it's all about Office 2013 and what's not the best way to start it off is with Word and I'm going to give you guys basically a quick start guide on how to uh, navigate certain features that you normally will uh, have used in the past and how it looks, how it feels and all that good stuff. Uh, keep in mind, most likely these videos are going to be coming out every Tuesday. Um, I'm shooting this one out a little earlier because I want to just give this information to you guys. Okay, so let's get started. So when you first open up Word 2013, you will see that you have several choices for getting started. Now, please take into consideration I'm running everything on a virtual machine. Uh, I'm not ba I'm not running everything on a physical machine. So uh, as you can see, this is my virtual machine VMware, and this is my actual machine. So I'm basically running everything. Huh. So the first time you open it up, you basically get this. It allows you to use a template, uh, pick recent files, or basically start with a blank document. Now. At the top right here, this little text box right here is basically search for online templates. Type keywords into the search box to find templates online at office.com. At the very bottom of the text box, you get suggested searches. You click on the word below to search box to find some of the most popular templates. On the upper right hand side, which is new for Office 2013, it's the sign in feature. Sign into your account and get to documents that you save online. Okay. On the left hand side you have your open recent files which is recent list provides easy access to your most recently used documents. As you can see everything is blank. I don't have anything. You're also going to get this as well. Uh, so ask me later and don't bother me. And right below the recents you have open other files which allows you to browse to find other documents stored online or on your computer locally this is again part of the whole setup um, I'm gonna close this because when you install Office 2013 into your machine and you first open up a program you get all this advertisement you know so you just want to close it out and just start working at the middle portion you will basically see uh, the option to create a new document which you're able to start a uh, an empty page by just clicking on the blank document pretty easy and right next to it as you can see while I'm scrolling down on the page you basically have options with these are basically the templates so this is basically template previews okay now uh, a quick tip, uh, if you want to skip the screen and go straight to a blank page, you can either hit enter or hit escape. You can do whichever one. Uh, I'm going to hit enter. And, and there you go. It should automatically take you to a blank page. Now, this is something that everyone's familiar, right? Now, Microsoft Word 2013 looks different from previous versions, so this is the reason why I'm creating this web series for you guys for the entire suite so you guys can get familiar basic troubleshootings and tips and tricks now at the very top is basically the quick access toolbar uh, commands here are always visible you can right click a command to add it here Okay. Uh, at the very bottom you have the ribbon tabs which you can click on any tab on the ribbon to display its buttons and commands when you open a document in Word 2013 the ribbons home tab is displayed by default this tab contains many of the most frequently used commands in Word, such as paste, copy, cut, bold, italics, underline, font, changing the size of the font, changing the color, center, right align, all the basic features that we normally use when we are using Word. If you need any help, at the upper right corner, you have a little question mark that you can click on it, which is the same thing as pressing F1. Okay? right here this little arrow is basically allows you to minimize the ribbon okay at the bottom right here 
You basically got the zoom in and zoom out feature, which allows you to move the slider to adjust the view of your page. By default, is 100%. Right next to it, you have the switch views, which allows you to switch to read view, print view, or web view. Right next to the ribbons, you don't notice this little arrow right here, which is pointing down, is basically the dialog box launcher. Next to any group of ribbon commands, you can click to see a box with more options. So if I click on it, I will get more options for the styles. If I click on the paragraphs, I will get more options for the paragraph. Pretty cool. Now at the bottom right here, you basically got your word count. Now the word count, look here to see the word count of how many words you have in your document. And if you select a particular certain amount of of a paragraph or a selection of words, it would tell you the amount. So for testing, let's go hello everyone and welcome to my series. So if I select everything, and that is a word count of seven. Awesome. Now, what's new on the ribbon? The new design tab in the Word 2013 makes it easy to use themes, styles, and other formatting features and to understand how they relate to one another. You can easily customize the ribbon to suit your needs by creating new tabs and filling them with the commands you use the most. To, be to begin customizing the ribbon commands, you can basically click on File, which is so slow, Options, and within option, you should get customized ribbons. Okay. Now, another feature that Office has is the sign in to Office. Work whenever or wherever you want. By signing in into your Microsoft Office, you can safely get to your Office files from anywhere. Okay. Look for your name at the top right corner of the ribbon. After you sign in, you can update your profile or switch accounts from here so I'm not signed in so I'm gonna sign in and uh, I do have a personal one so I'm gonna use my personal one and I'm gonna sign in I really don't have any documents to my SkyDrive because again SkyDrive is what office is piggybacking on so you can basically drop files inside your SkyDrive and access it anywhere so I'm gonna log in into my account which I have one and let's sign in. Awesome. Look at that. That's awesome. Uh, this customization right here in the top with the little design is basically coming from my uh, my Microsoft email account as well as my icon right here. So that's pretty cool. So I can click on it and as you can see I can switch an account. I can basically do what I would need to do. Uh, if I go to file, hopefully it goes to file. Let's go to open. I'm going a little bit more in advance, but uh, most likely uh, within here, uh, if I had documents within my SkyDrive, as you can see, Bernardo Rocha SkyDrive, uh, you would see the documents. Again, I don't have any documents, so there's no point of me browsing, which I just want to show you guys. I'm going a little bit more advanced with this web series. Again, this is just a quick start guide to get you guys up and running. Okay? So, now. A question that you might be asking yourself is things you might be looking for. What are the things that I should be looking for? So I have a nice little PDF right here. And within the PDF, let's run it down. Now, you can use this list below to find some of the most common or more common tools and commands in Word 2013. Now, to open and save, print, preview, protect, send, convert files, or connect to locations to save your documents to in the cloud, you basically use the file. Okay. Uh, to change line, spacing, apply formatting and styles to the text, your home, which is basically your font, your paragraph, and your style. Uh, to basically insert pages, blank pages, tables, pictures, hyperlinks, headers, footers, or page numbers, the insert tab. Uh, to quickly change and look of your document, change the page background, color, and add border to the page, and or you want to add watermarks, the design tab. 
Uh, you can also, if you want to set the margins, add a page break, create newsletter style columns, change spacing between paragraphs, etc., etc. The page layout. Uh, if you want to create a table of contents or insert footnotes and endnotes, reference. Uh, if you want to create envelopes or labels or do mail marriages, mailing. Check spelling and grammar, get word count or track changes, which should be the review tab. And switch between document views, open the navigation panel or show the ruler, it's the view tab. Basically, from my experience, uh, I've used Office 2010 and almost all these right here, the two things, are all the same as 2010 Office. So if you guys know how to work 2010, 2013 should not be a problem for you at all. Okay? Now, let's go back into the system and finally went into my SkyDrive. So I don't really need to get anything in my SkyDrive. And now, where is the print preview? Now, uh, if you click on file and print you see a print preview on the current document to the right of other Yusu print related settings most likely this option has not been taken away from us office 2013 I mean office 2010 sorry about that did have this feature which is pretty cool on the right side of the window previews how the document will look when it's printed you can basically use the left side of the window to choose a printer or a fine-tuned setting. For example, to change the port to change from portrait to landscape, change the paper size, or to print only the current page. Now, to set more print options, click on the page setup link at the bottom of the left side of the window below settings, which is right here. Page setup. Awesome. Now, where do I choose options? So you can click on File and Options. I'm already in File, so I'm gonna go back File and Options. So you, you guys can know what I'm talking about. Uh, to basically open up the Word Options dialog box. This is where you can customize Word settings and preferences. Some settings in Word Options dialog box apply only to Word, but some preferences, for example, choosing light gray or dark gray for your Office theme, will apply to all the installed Office programs which is something that I really really like um, I love changing the background of the office because it's pretty cool um, I think in office 2010 it allowed you to change it to light blue gray and black black was always the cool thing that I used to pick and that's the thing that I used to stick with now one last thing before I let you guys go is how to work with people who don't have Word 2013. This was normally a huge problem when Office 2007 was upgraded to 2010. Now, here are some things to keep in mind when sharing or exchanging files with people who are using an older version of Word. Now, in Word 2013, you, you open a document that was creating an earlier version of Word. That's pretty cool. But what happens in Word 2013, you will see the words compatibility mode next to the file name of the title bar, which was the same problem with Office 07 and 010. Compatibility mode makes sure that new, uh, let me just close this out, it's my security thing, uh, make sure that no new feature in Word 2013 are available in the document so that people using earlier versions of Word can work with it. What should I do? This is basically what you have to do. Uh, you can work in compatibility mode or you can convert your document to a new format. To convert the new document, click on File Info Convert. Converting your document lets you use the new features, but people using earlier versions of Word might have difficulties editing certain parts of documents. The second thing, you should save your document as a Word 2013 file. What happens? If someone opens the document in an earlier version of Word, they may not be able to change some items that were created using Word 2013 features. Word 2003 users will need the free com compatibility pack. A prompt to download the pack appears when Word 2003 users opens the document. So hopefully no one's actually using Word 2013. I'm hoping not. 
what should you do? You, sh you need to share a Word. If you need to share a Word 2013 document with someone using an earlier version of Word, run the compatibility check tool to make sure the file will work for them. It's best practice, guys. This is right here is best practice. Always do this if you're sharing files with someone that doesn't have the version that you have. You basically can click on file info, check for issues, check compatibility. This tool would tell you which new features in Word 2013 won't work in older versions, which is a pretty cool feature. Uh, the last one, you can save your document as a Word 2013, uh, Word 2003 file, which I think you used to be able to do with Word 2010. Uh, if what happens when you do that? If you use new Word features or formatting in your document, Word 2003 users may see warnings about unsupported features or the formatting or feature may not appear in the file. What should you do? You don't have to do anything necessarily. When you save your file in an older Word 2003 file format, the compatibility checker will run automatically and warn you about any unsupported feature. Then you can choose to make any changes to your document, which is pretty cool. Overall, my two, my two cents on the Office thing is mostly Office is built for cloud services. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this first episode of Word 2013. Uh, pretty soon, uh, I'm going to be coming out with Excel, Access, PowerPoint, the entire suite with this web series. Please share, please like, please comment. Um, and without you guys, I can't do this. And again, it's free IT training, so I catch you guys later, and thank you so much. Peace out.